morning. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back. Thanks for checking in on me. I hope spring is treating you and your loved ones really well. In an effort to love thy neighbor, I decided to make like a little snack pack, summer supply basket, and put it by my doorway. So I put some like cheese crackers and some sunglasses, and I hope this helps somebody in need. And then I fed the birds, and now on to celebrate 420. I love springtime, and it's been so great watching these little signs of spring pop up everywhere. Little bird babies. Good morning. Today I am heading to Metropolis to visit my favorite local dispensary. I mean, I guess technically it's Illinois, so it's not that local, but it is the closest I could get to buying recreationally and legally. This drive on I-24 is one of my favorites. I love to pop on some of my favorite podcasts like Just Trish or the Cancelled Podcast and let the road take me. I wanted to make true to my promise to myself and visit the Black Rifle Coffee Company in Clarksville and I was so grateful I did. The coffee was incredible. I did the Betsy Ross iced with oat milk. It's like a blackberry white mocha and I did it half sweet because I don't love syrup like that but it was outrageously good. It has been so long since I've hit the road. I was so grateful to just put the windows down and cruise. One of the reasons this is one of my favorite drives is because it goes through these cornfields in Kentucky and you watch how they nurture and tend to the land and you watch these crops get planted and the seeds are sown and then they grow slowly and then they are harvested and the plants then wither and winter and then they come back again. So. Whatever you're going through this year, because trust me, I'm right there with you, just know it's just a cycle, just like everything else. It looks like it's devastated at times, and then it flourishes. Made it back to Music City just in time to stop by one of my favorite record stores, which is The Great Escape. There are a ton of record stores in Nashville, including Grimey's and Vinyl Tap and a lot of East Nashville favorites, as well as McKay's, but I decided to keep it West today. The Great Escape is just that. It feels like you've been transported back in time. It gives me CD warehouse feels, if you know, you know. And I love that they have everything from comic books to old magazines to movie posters to like cardboard cutouts of your favorite action figures and sometimes celebrities. So definitely worth checking out. They have a lot of refurbished vinyl as well as new releases.
Now it's time to head to the movies with our cinematic crusader. Here with another titanium take, here's our movie maven, Kai. Hey everybody, it's Kai. We made it through another week and oh my gosh, let's all take a breath and shake it off. It's time for us to rest, relax, and talk about movies. So this week is Record Store Day, uh, April 20th. Um, I honestly didn't even know this was a thing until like several people suddenly brought it up to me. And I started thinking about it and I'm like, I spend so much time and money and energy and effort digitizing my CD collection that there is no way I'm gonna go start a whole nother collection that I have to go put on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> but it's a really big like cultural thing that people do. They get together, um, they talk about their collections, they find their you know first pressings and their new media and, it's all very cool. And I thought, you know, we always talk about movies, but we very rarely ever talk about um, the music that's in them. So I wanted to focus this week on 10 soundtracks that I just really, really, really love. Um, I know that this isn't my top 10. I know this is in no particular order because depending on my mood, um, you know, it can change. But these are the ones that kind of came to the top of my head when I just sat down and made a list. Now, I stayed away from uh, movie musicals um, because they typically either come from the stage or go to the stage. And that's, I feel like, a whole different category. Um, and so no Moulin Rouge, no Rent, no Singing in the Rain, uh, no Mamma Mia, you know. And I stayed away from soundtracks that were mostly instrumental. So there might've been like one song that was on the radio, like for Titanic, it was My Hero Go On, the rest of them were instrumentals. The Godfather, uh, Tron Legacy, even though it is one of my favorite soundtracks, it absolutely should be on this list, but I could do a whole nother show on that. Maybe we'll do, we'll talk about Tron Legacy soon. Uh, so this is just 10 that I came up with off the top of my head that I know um, come up on my playlist in the car a lot. So the first one uh, is Suicide Squad. I never even saw this movie, never even wanted to, but the soundtrack is so amazing. There is a diversity, but also like a flow to it, you know? And it was just really, really, really well done. Uh, it's, you know, one of those that you can put on beginning to end and not skip a track. It's flawless, absolutely flawless. Um, the next one is Can't Hardly Wait. That's from a movie from 1998. Um, it's a, an ensemble cast, you know, teenage rom-com raunchy, you know, thing in the vein of like American Pie and, you know, all of those, um, the cast is, you know, Ethan Embry, Seth Green, Peter Fascinelli, Fascinelli, uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Melissa Joan Hart, like everybody is in this movie. <clears throat> and the soundtrack for it has, uh, like a lot of party hits and stuff, but then it also has people like Matthew Sweet and Third Eye Blind. And um, it was a really good alternative, but not super heavy, you know, kind of soundtrack. Really good at pointing out like moments in the film that like, this is a very sweet moment. This is a very heartfelt moment. This is, you know, whatever. And so I really like that one and I listened to it a lot. Um, I think that nobody can have like a, a best soundtracks um, list without having Forrest Gump on there. It's basically a greatest hits of that era of the 60s and 70s. Um, absolutely incredible. It's one that you wouldn't even realize you're listening to the soundtrack. You would think that you just had like, you know, serious seventies on or something like that, because it really is just, um, those super, um, iconic songs from those times. And I love that. Uh, Purple Rain is the next one, Dripping in Prince. And, um, I will, I will listen to anything that drips in Prince. I almost put the Batman soundtrack on here, but I think that Purple Rain is a better one. Um, it has some of his, you know, biggest hits of all time. And I think it comes from a movie that if you don't already have like a, a love for him, you watch it and you think, you know, it's the movie is so bad that it's good. Uh, it's definitely a cult classic, uh, but it genuinely is just like one of those, like, what did I just watch? I'm different now that's having him watch that movie. <laughs> um, and if you haven't watched it since you were younger, watch it now as an adult. It's an interesting experience. Um, <clears throat> the next one is Dirty Dancing. I really love the way they did this soundtrack because they took some songs from the time. Um, some of them, they had covers. So like, You Don't Own Me as the Blow Monkeys who were big in the 70s and 80s, punk's, uh, uh, punk group. And they covered a song from that time, but then there were just songs from that time that weren't necessarily huge hits, but they were just kind of like radio fodder. And then they had new songs like Yes and Time of My Life. It was just a really interesting way to, to do all of that. And I, I really, really love that format. And I think it worked really well with the, um, with the, the storytelling. Next one is Labyrinth, uh, another movie that was basically, you know, David Bowie going, I want to make an album, uh, and be in a movie. And 
thank you because it's such an incredible movie and it's such an incredible album. Um, I love the way that the songs really kind of encapsulate the moment of what's happening in, in the movie because you have, you know, um, Underground, which is, you know, very much an 80s kind of pop song that's happening in the moment, present day, real world, you know. And then you have something like As the World Falls Down, which is, you know, almost a music box song um, that plays during a dream sequence in a ball where these, you know, Sarah's in that beautiful gown and, you know, Gareth is in the, you know, it's, oh, it's so beautiful. I love that scene. Anyway, I love Labyrinth. The next one is Black Panther. I feel like this soundtrack gets so much praise and it's still not enough. It's so, it's so good. Um, it's one, again, beginning to end, I can listen to it and, you know, every single song will catch your attention. Um, it's hard to make it just background noise. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is brilliant. And I mean, there really couldn't have been anyone better to do a soundtrack for a movie like that. Um, it really just kind of, you know, highlights how amazing like of a, a production, everything came together to give us Black Panther. Um, the next one is Romeo and Juliet. I don't think any 90s kid would, you know, um, argue. Uh, I mean, it's right up there. It's, you know, probably top of the list for a lot of people because it's another one that has a lot of diversity to it. But, you know, it was coming along in the mid 90s. You had that, you know, growth period between grunge and the boy bands where alternative really started to be a thing. And the people that stayed with alternative usually came from, you know, the, the new wave of the 80s and then went into emo. So it was a weird kind of transition thing. Um, and the soundtrack was just so incredibly good from the choral versions of When Doves Cry to Desiree Singing Kissing You. I mean, that's iconic, absolutely iconic. Um, next one is Clueless and another one, um, you know, mid 90s, a lot of alternative, uh, a lot of groups that really hadn't found their place um, at that point and eventually did. And I really love um, the way that, you know, there's a song and you can kind of go, that's for this person in the movie. And this song is for this person in the movie. And this song is for this person in the movie. Like the, the soundtrack almost takes on a cast of its own. And I thought that was really well done. I thought that was something that we don't, you know, see very much. Um, and then of course, number one soundtrack of all time on, I think everyone's list, uh, is The Bodyguard. Um, like I said, you know, Whitney Houston wanted to make a, a, another album and she made a movie with it and we thank her for it because it's what we will forever remember as being, you know, her best work. So, um, you know, Bodyguard, you really don't need to say much more than that. Every single song on it was a hit and, you know, huge and platinum and all kinds of stuff. Um, I want to just give like a, a short moment of um, honorable mention to someone named Graham Ravel. Graham Ravel is uh, a composer and a music supervisor who did some of the biggest and most amazing um, soundtracks in the 90s. Um, and then some of like the more like, you know, indie underground rom-coms. So he did like The Craft, The Crow. Um, he did a movie called Three to Tango. Ridiculous. If you have a really good soundtrack um, that was either like, industrial or jazz. I don't know. Um, it was probably Graham Ravel. Uh, so thank you, Graham, for making the 90s uh, movie time just so amazing and, and wonderful. Thank you for coming and seeing us again uh, this week. Guys, we're almost done with April um, and we need to still be taking time for ourselves. You know, we always make that resolution at the beginning of the year and by now it's usually fallen off. So put one of these uh, soundtracks on, spend the hour, hour and 15 that they usually run, lay on your bed and have a moment of nostalgia, have a moment of relaxation, have a moment just for you because you need it and you're worth it. And we love you guys. Drink your water, take your meds, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>